Michael Sapersky is the CEO of Consulting Success and Coach to Consultants. He has advised organizations like Financial Times, Dow Jones, RBC, and helped Panasonic launch new products into global markets. But more importantly, he's helped over 400 consultants from around the world in 75 industries add six and seven figures to their annual revenues. Over 35,000 consultants read his weekly consulting newsletter. Michael is also the author of the Amazon bestsellers, Act Now, How Successful Consultants Thrive During Chaos and Uncertainty, The Elite Consulting Mind, and Consulting Success, the book. Welcome to the Sort of Success podcast, Michael. I'm so excited to have you. Hey, great to be with you. Great. Well, why don't you share with our audience a little bit about what you do and, and kind of more importantly, why, why you do it. So uh, we help con uh, consultants to grow their consulting businesses. Um, I've been doing this now for 20, almost 21 years. I've been in the consulting business, mm -hmm. uh, building multiple consulting businesses myself, which is really where the, the whole concept of running the business consulting success comes from, which is I know what it's like to, to struggle and I know what it's like to see success. Um, and so uh, we wanted, our mission was really, you know, and continues to be to this day, about 11 years since we've been working with consultants specifically, is just to help them to, um, to achieve a lot more success and to avoid a lot of the, the common struggles and challenges that you have when you're growing a consulting business. Yes. And so what do you mean about uh, growth without overwhelm? What does that mean? Yeah. So uh, I think this is uh, a pretty common occurrence and a lot of people face it where, you know, the, the biggest thing that holds most people back from this idea of, of achieving more and growing more is they're trying to do everything themselves. Uh, they, they feel that they have, you know, the unique uh, skills and, and experience and expertise that can't be replicated, that no one else can do it. Or even if somebody else can do it in their mind, especially if you're a solopreneur and your earlier stages, uh, you think that it's going to cost you more money. You're looking at, you know, bringing in someone else and whether that's you're using a service or, or some kind of technology or you're bringing someone in uh, part-time or, or full-time as an employee, contractor, freelancer, you look at that as an expense. And what a lot of people do as kind of early stage entrepreneurs is they think, well, that's money out of my pocket rather than in my pocket. And so I should just do it myself. And you know what? I can do it faster because I've done it before and it's going to take me more time to train somebody. And so they're looking at it, number one, in the wrong way because these things are investments to achieve growth. You can't do everything yourself. And so you need to create the right systems, the right structure, the right processes and the right team to a degree. You don't have to go out and hire a big team, but you can't do it all yourself. And so looking at it, first of all, as an investment where you can see it as uh, yes, you're taking, let's say $50 an hour and finding someone really great I mean, for $50 an hour. You can find really, really great talent. Uh, but the mindset that people have is short term. They're thinking, well, that's money out of my pocket. But the reality is, Yes, maybe it's fifty dollars out of your pocket, you know, for that one hour, uh, or maybe you get two hours for that. It's twenty-five dollars an hour. But uh, if your value, and again, I'm not suggesting people should charge by the hour because I don't think you should. But if you break down what your value is on an hourly basis, it should at least be a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, maybe three hundred, maybe even five hundred dollars an hour. And so let's just say that your average value per hour is one hundred fifty dollars an hour, and you're paying somebody else fifty dollars an hour. Well, what that means is that if you tr if you continue to do everything yourself you're actually losing, right, $100 an hour. Yeah. Whereas if you flip it, right, you're now profiting an extra $100 an hour because you freed yourself up to go out and create more value to focus on, on tasks and activities that uh, are gonna you know, deliver a lot more revenue for your business or you just now have more time to enjoy life. So this idea of growth without overwhelm and without feeling overwhelmed is to really embrace that you can't do everything yourself if you want to achieve more and you need to be smart. You need to think longer term and start uh, you know, putting the right systems and processes in place, build the right team around you so you can accomplish a lot more. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that totally. And so how does your momentum program fit into that philosophy we're just talking about? Yeah. So um, thanks for asking. Momentum is the program that we developed for early stage new consultants. Um, we've now had thousands of people go through that program or the earlier variation of it. Uh, when we first put it out many years ago, we've actually just recently updated it. Uh, but it's really for the person who is coming from the corporate world or they've been an employee, they have skills, they have knowledge, right? They're very good at what they do, but they don't understand how to build a consulting business. They're not sure how to price themselves. They don't know who their ideal clients should really be and what area to specialize in because they have so many years of, of skills, knowledge, and expertise. They don't know how to write uh, and structure proposals. They don't know how to market themselves. They're maybe not comfortable with marketing and sales. So 
we've taken all of that and broken it down and really engineered it so that people can go through a process that has been proven over the years by now having you know many consultants go through it and achieving great success. We see people able to actually uh, see positive results and real progress four times faster than if they were trying to figure it out themselves. Uh, and so even if they don't feel like they're marketing and salespeople, they can follow this process. We break it down into a daily basis so you know exactly what you need to do each day and take action. And just by doing the right things in the right order, uh, you're able to not only feel a lot more confident because you're starting to actually make more tangible pro uh, progress, but you're actually able to see a lot more success because again, you're doing the right thing. So that's what momentum is for. And then we have a coaching program called Clarity, which is for those that, that want more of a custom plan um, and really to you know, kind of structure things specifically for their situation. And who's your ideal client for these programs? So yeah, for Momentum, it's that, that newer stage, kind of early stage consultant or person that is getting into consulting. Uh, and then Clarity Coaching is for those that, I mean, we have people who are earlier stage. We also have those that are running three, $4 million per year consulting businesses, but it's really those that want to accelerate their growth with a custom kind of roadmap and, and plan in place uh, where we work very closely with them. That's who Clarity is for. But we also have a lot of free resources for people. We have over a thousand articles, um, hundreds of, of podcasts uh, available, lots of videos. So there's lots of free stuff available for people and they're certainly welcome to, to start there. And where would they go to your website? Yeah. Consulting success.com. Okay. And so tell me the difference between a consultant and a coach. Yeah. So, um, you know, a, a coach is someone that works with, it could be, um, you know, an individual within an organization or outside of an organization, but it's, you know, somebody who wants to achieve more or to solve a problem that they have. And as a coach, you go in and really one of the main roles of, of a coach is to ask questions, right, of that person that you're working with to help them to, to see things themselves, right? And so it's, there's a dialogue, whereas a consultant, right, will also ask questions. And in fact, the best consultants are very, they're, they're uh, masterful at asking great questions. But the difference with a consultant is the consultant will actually go off and do the work, right? As a coach, uh, I'm not going to do the work for you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to, you know, share with you and even advise to a degree what you could do, right? There's different levels and different kinds of approaches to coaching. Some people will never actually provide specific recommendations. They'll ask questions, but they really want the person they're coaching to arrive at the answers themselves. Uh, my style is a little bit different because if I, if I have seen something many times before, rather than letting that person kind of just deal with it themselves, I'm, I'll ask them questions, but I also want to point out and say, Hey, you know, have you thought about this? What if, you know, what would it look like if you did that? And I want to provide a little bit more guidance because I'm the kind of person that, that you know, uh, really wants to see an impact on people. I want them to have a, a positive result. And so if I can get in there faster, then I'm going to do that. But with a consultant, the difference is that the consultant will actually roll up their sleeves and they're going to, whether it's, you know, write the strategic plan or they're going to facilitate a session or they're, or they're going to do training or they're going to go in and actually, you know, do some, some work. Whereas a coach won't do that. A coach will guide you. They'll maybe advise you. They're going to ask you really great questions so you can arrive at the answers uh, yourself, but a coach will not actually do that work in terms of, you know, the way that the consultant will. Yeah. And is there a particular type of consultant that you enjoy working with best? Uh, so industry wise, we have clients all over the world in all different industries. The one thing that we always look for, and it's kind of a requirement of ours, especially at the, at the clarity coaching level, uh, because we're working personally with, with our clients is they, they need to really have true expertise. And, and what that means is they need to be able to deliver real value to the, you know, to the client, um, or to the organization that they're working with. It might be, uh, you know, a small kind of entrepreneurial startup that is their ideal client. It might be a nonprofit. It might be a multi-billion dollar, dollar organization, but they need to be good at what, you know, it is that they do because that's not what we're going to teach them. We're not going to teach, you know, a client of ours how to be better at artificial intelligence or machine learning or science or, um, you know, working with, with agencies and so forth. Uh, what, what we're going to help them to do is the business side of how to take the skills, the knowledge, the expertise that they have and really leverage that to be able to see results much faster and to be able to create the lifestyle and the business model that is really right for their specific situation. Mm -hmm. And how do relationships come into play here in the work that you do? Oh, I mean, relationships are, are everything. Um, if we rewind back to, you know, one of the companies that uh, my cousin and business partner Sam and I had many years ago, it was actually our second business uh, that we, we ran together and uh, it was called Kanke culture and Kanke is the Japanese word for relationship. Um, 
I later went to Japan, opened up a branch office for that company over there. And so we, we've always had a strong kind of Asian influence uh, in where we've traveled and live and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, we're very big believers in, in relationship. And, you know, the consulting business is very much a relationship business. Um, and if we want to kind of compare and contrast that to what's happening today, I think there's a, a massive opportunity, whether you're a coach, you're a consultant, whether you run a small business, to focus uh, a lot more on relationships and a lot less on transactions. All right, this is the problem today. If you're a user of LinkedIn, you probably get inundated with messages, you know, every day, every week from people just wanting to sell you something. They're, they don't even know who you are. They clearly have done no research into you and what you care about and, you know, what your challenges might be. And they're just trying to sell you. And that's a mindset of transactions, right? That's a short-term mindset where people are just thinking about, hey, the more people I get in front of, maybe someone will, will say yes. And, you know, that's, that's not how you sell or you, how you even want to think about engaging when you're providing services that are, that are at a higher level that are valuable. I mean, if you're selling me a pair of socks uh, or a pen, maybe, you know, may, maybe just a, a bunch of emails going to a bunch of different people. Maybe, yeah, I need a, I need a new pen today and that works. But if you're selling, you know, services that are connected to, to your expertise and you want to be positioned as a trusted advisor, you, you can't do that by using an automation tool to send thousands of, you know, of messages and just hoping that someone clicks or, or, or responds. It's typically much better to focus not on volume, but instead to focus on value and really think about how can you provide value to the, the person on the other side that you're reaching out to and what do they really care about? Uh, and yes, you're not going to get in front of as many people, but the people that you do get in front of, you're going to create a, a much stronger connection with. And again, when we're talking about relationships, right, don't have a short-term mindset. Don't go into it thinking, okay, you know, this week I didn't land a new client, but I just started this process. So I'm, I'm a failure. No, right. Think about it. You're planting the seeds today that are going to provide you with, you know, apples in terms of like an apple tree, right. For, for many you know years to come. And so the more of that that you do consistently, the more that you'll actually win down the road. And sometimes what happens, right. Because there's typically, I think three to 5% of the market that at any time is actually looking to buy what you're offering yeah. right now. Right. Mm -hmm. The majority aren't. So, if you're judging your success and thinking that you need to somehow get a mass number of people to say yes today, that's not going to happen. But the more people that you get in front of today, really focus on value and, and the relationship, do that consistently, you'll have a higher percentage over time of people that will say yes and will be ready. And that's how you put yourself in a position to never have to, you know, be hungry for clients because you'll always have more clients than you can handle in your pipeline. Yes. I love that strategy. I really um, get, frustrated to get those LinkedIn invitations from people. Sometimes they tell you right away they're trying to sell you something, but other times they'll just go, oh, I looked at your profile. It looks like you've been a great success. Let's connect. And then you connect and then the next message in two seconds, the automated message comes, you know, buy this thing, which isn't even appropriate, you know. <laughs> Why? Why do they do that? They just think that, and I guess it's because of what you said. They just think the volume eventually won some of those 3% people will think that's okay because for most people, I think that turns them off immediately, even if they were in the market for it. Doesn't it? Yeah, there's, there's a few things going on there, right? Number one is that, um, that they don't know, right? They, they don't know that there's a different or, or better approach. They just think that's the way to do it because the other component here is there's a lot of people out there that are now, you know, kind of using the hype. They're, they're using the ability to send mass messages and automation, right? And, and so they're, they're trying to convey to people, this is, a great opportunity. Uh, and so they're not talking about the shortcomings of this and they're just trying to, you know, again, they're looking at, this is a transaction. How can I get the coach, the consultant, the business owner to use my tool because look at what you can do. And you know, this is going to save you so much time and blah, 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 which is true. But the reality is the impact is going to be significantly less. And they're not going to tell you that. So people are, are being kind of misinformed. Uh, but the other part of it is that the alternative, right? Which is focusing on value, not on volume takes more time. It takes yeah. more work. And we live in a society today that really, you know, expects instant gratification. Uh, and people are always looking for the shortcut and the, the you know, the, the automation and the hack and the tool to just fix things quickly. But anyone that's built a meaningful business will know that most things that actually create value, most things that are worthwhile do take a little bit more time. Um, and the sooner that you start that process and start doing the right things, the sooner you'll actually see greater results. But it does take a little bit more time and it takes a bit more energy, but the, the benefits are, are worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about the book you just wrote. Sure. Uh, yeah. So act now we published, I believe it was back in April. Uh, so April, 2020, right kind of in, in the height of everything going on in the world with, with COVID. 
Uh, and this was not a planned book. I didn't, we, you know, I didn't kind of, I wasn't thinking about this many months in advance uh, or years in advance. It was literally seeing what was happening as March was progressing into April. And we said, you know, wow, like this is, a, this is having very, a very big impact on, on many people. Uh, and what I observed is that a lot of people, when they're confronted with chaos and uncertainty, they just stick their head in the sand, right? They don't know what to do. And, and I have a lot of empathy, empathy with that because listen, it, it's, there's uncertainty. Like if you don't know what to do, you don't know what to do. And that can be very hard for people. So what I thought was, you know, actually I was sitting one morning um, in my house and I just started to write a, a letter to, uh, to our clients. And um, it was just a letter going out, sharing with them what I was observing, what I was seeing, what my thoughts were about, uh, you know, different cycles that happened in the economy. And if you look back at different challenging times, like, you know, things will, will bounce back, not necessarily in the way that they were before, but uh, there's lessons to be learned from, from history. And so I just wanted to share my observations. And when I shared that with clients, the, the response was, was tremendous. I mean, they, they really, really appreciate it. Some ask, can I share this with my clients? So I thought this, the, this needs to be shared beyond just our paying clients. This just should be going to others because it can benefit them too. And so I started to then share those same messages on LinkedIn publicly. And again, you know, many, many comments and engagements and shares and, and all that kind of stuff later, I thought there's something here. And I think that we need to go deeper rather than just a couple of posts or, or emails. Let, let's explore this. Um, and I don't want it just to be my own opinion. I want to actually ask some very successful consultants that I, that I know, you know, what are they doing in their businesses? And so I reached out to people like Rita McGrath and Martin Lindstrom, John Werlow, Perry Marshall and, and others about, you know, what are you doing right now in your business? How are you transitioning? You know, uh, like what decisions are you, are you making? What advice would you have for others? And so I took those interviews uh, and uh, this was very much a team effort uh, to get it out because from concept to publishing, we did it in about three weeks. Oh my uh, and we want to, yeah, we want to, to really, we were not aiming for perfection. I mean, you can look at that book and you could probably find some things. And I'm sure you can find things because I've found things afterwards that, you know, we could have made it even better or even more valuable. But the goal with this is, was really imperfect action. And how can we get this out as quickly as possible to have an impact on others? And so the book, uh, Act Now, the subtitle is How Successful Consultants Thrive During Chaos and Uncertainty. Uh, there's been thousands of people that have accessed it. It's available uh, in Kindle version, in paperback and Audible but we were giving the book away for free. And so if anyone wants to get access to that for free, you can go to consultingsuccess.com forward slash act now uh, and get a free copy, which is in digital format, but the other ones you can pay if, if you want. Uh, but it's really just here are the best practices from our own experience, from, from my mind, but also from, from six other people um, who have accomplished a lot in their careers. Uh, and what was really interesting about this, Pat, is that the feedback and kind of the sentiment and the best practices of everyone uh, uh, are very, very connected. And what that says to me, and what I then shared in the book was, you know, here are specific things that you can do from a, a mindset perspective and how to look at that life and what's going on around us right now, but also from a strategic point of view in your business and tactical, actually, you know, actions you can be taking right now that will have a very uh, great benefit to your business, even if it's not at this exact moment, certainly in the years to come because the goal of this was not just to help people to manage it and survive the challenging time that we're in right now but but also how can you take steps right now to, to to thrive so that as things do improve you're actually further ahead because some people will continue to keep their head in the sand they're going to hope they're just going to kind of pray they're just going to you know wait for things to get better but those that succeed are taking action right now they're using the opportunity that is created right now to do new things to challenge themselves to accomplish a lot more and those will be the ones that will um, you know, just come out the other side in a much better place, even than when they started. Wow, that's fabulous. So we'll make sure that we send everybody over there to get that. And so is there anything that you know right now, now, today, August 10th, uh, that would change how uh, you wrote that then? Uh, no, I think that the, the, the practices in there. So even though the book was kind of created with, with COVID, right? Um, the way that the information that's in that book actually is not about COVID. I mean, it's, it's all about how as entrepreneurs, uh, what are the best practices the entrepreneurs should have put in place at any time or, you know, during any chaos or any uncertainty. Uh, so for example, one of the big things that we were doing in March and April and even continue to this day, but, but especially at those times 
is we were, um, you know, engaging with our clients even more. Like I remember Saturday morning, I was walking around uh, the neighborhood near my house and I was just calling clients up and I wasn't calling them to say, Hey, you know, do you need help with, with this? Or do you want to buy that? Or do you want to upgrade to this different service? I was calling saying, you know, Hey Sam, uh, Hey Jill, like, how are you doing? How are you and your family right now? That was it. Yeah. I was just showing that I cared. I was just being there for them. Uh, that's a massive opportunity. Why? Because those people, right? Our, our clients, uh, they will remember that. Yeah. And when, when things kind of, you know, uh, progress, they're going to look back and go, who is really there for me? Who is really on my side? And that's something that all of us can do right with our clients, with our friends, with our family. And so that's just one example of what we talk about in the book. And there's a lot more kind of practical step-by-step -step applications. Uh, but no, there's nothing that I would change in terms of the, the content of that book, maybe some ways we structure, maybe some additional checklists at the end that we could have provided people. Uh, but we were just so focused on getting it out there and, um, you know, having an impact on people. And we've received so many, uh, you know, emails from people about how they've appreciated it and how they're putting it into practice in their business. And, and that's really what for us, I mean, that's the fulfillment. That's what it's all about is just helping people to, to create more success and, and have that impact. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds fabulous. One thing that I always ask everybody who's on the Sort of Success podcast with me are, what are three traits that you think people need to have in order to really soar to success? Um, it's a great question. So the first one I would say is, is action taking. Uh, more, more than anything else, you know, action is what creates results. Um, planning and, and ideas uh, are valuable. But, uh, but if you don't take action on them, then, then they're meaningless. Right. Uh, so I'm a very big proponent of imperfect action. Uh, and that's how you, how you really learn. I mean, you can study things and you can think about things and you can plan things, you can strategize, but if you don't actually take action, you're not going to learn whether the ideas that you have uh, are the right ones or not. And so that's, that's the best way to actually improve. So that would be number one is, is taking action. Uh, I think number two is about never, never settling. And what I mean by that is, that you're always looking for new ideas. You're always looking to improve yourself, whether that means that you are listening to podcasts like this, um, or you're reading books, or you're attending seminars or conferences or whatever it might be, but you're always looking to improve. And so in my case, uh, I go for a run every morning and I'm listening to podcasts when I run. That's for me is that's actually the only time I, I've, you know, they talk about multitasking. That's the only way, actually way that I think you can truly multitask, right? Because my, even though my, like I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm inputting what I'm hearing, my, my body's moving. And so I'm accomplishing exercise, right? Which is great for my health and my mind. I'm sweating, right? And I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm learning new things. And when I'm doing that, I think a lot of people, when they, when they learn, the mindset they have is, oh, like, you know, I listened to this 60 minute thing and I only got like one idea. Most of the stuff I knew, right? That mindset is, is a mindset that holds people back. When I listen to something or watch something, if I get one idea, if I see one thing that I can apply or one, you know, one idea, uh, one principle that expands my mindset, that's a massive win. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's also something that I see with successful people uh, is that you're, you're always looking to exp expand. You're never settling. You're always wanting to learn more. You're hungry for more, more information, more ideas. And then when you connect that with number one, you're then applying those ideas you know, in, in one form or another. And then I think the, the third is really about, it's a mixture of, you know, you call it dedication or commitment or perseverance, but it's really about when you identify something that you want, you don't stop until you get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to get it right away. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be some lessons learned or AKA what people call, you know, failure, which I don't really like to use that word. It's just lessons, you know, that you're learning as you're moving towards what you want. But uh, a lot of people get very excited about ideas and then maybe they even take a little bit of action towards those ideas. And maybe those ideas even came from something new that they learned, right? So they're all connected. But if, if you don't continue down that path, uh, you know, at the first kind of sight of, uh, of a challenge or getting knocked down, then you, you lose, right? Then you don't really make progress. You're not actually going to be able to sort of success. And so if you truly want to be able to create meaningful, um, you know, results and, and progress in your business and your life, because this can be applied certainly both to business and, and life in, in many different areas, that you need to be committed to it. You need to be dedicated to it. You need to persevere. Um, and that takes effort. It's not easy. You know, it's, it's actually a lot 
harder to, to be, to stay in a, in a place of positivity than it is negativity. You know, being negative is very easy. Being positive all the time is a lot harder. Uh, and it's even harder to uh, take that positivity and apply it right to whatever it is that you want to achieve in life. Uh, but, but doing that is, is, I believe, one of the most important ingredients for success. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Thanks so much. Those are excellent. And so tell us again the best way for people to reach you and grab the book. Uh, yeah, so consultingsuccess.com is home to everything. You can find the podcast there, articles, studies that we do about uh, the consulting industry. Uh, if you want to get the uh, copy of the, the new book, Act Now, you can go to consultingsuccess.com forward slash act now. Uh, and also welcome people if they want to connect on, on LinkedIn, just reach out to me there. Let me know that you saw uh, you know, coming from, from Pat's podcast here. We'd love to, to hear that. Just shoot me a little, little message so that I know where you're coming from, uh, but always happy to connect with good people. So um, yeah, thank you, Pat. Yeah, thank you so much for being with me today. My Bye-bye. pleasure. I really appreciate what you're doing. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Soar to Success podcast. For more insights into growing your business or improving your quality of life, visit soartosuccessmagazine.com and subscribe to the Soar to Success podcast on iTunes.